God damn it. This is another morning at SourceFed, and I tripped the alarm. Good morning. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. So I took a job recently. Welcome back to SourceFed, I'm Steven Subtek. Hey, hi, howdy, y'all. Welcome back to Table Talk. Howdy, hi, ho. Uh, I'm your host, Steven Subtek. I took the job for a lot of reasons. Number one being... I just, I wasn't happy anymore. Working from home was freeing for a while, but after four months you start to feel isolated. And when you fall into a comfort zone where your content is just part of a routine, you get demotivated. And sometimes you get to a point where a joke isn't so much a joke. I wanna die. I don't wanna live anymore. But those feelings come and go. And it's easy to forget that. In the ground, we the seeds if you don't remind yourself what really makes you happy, you'll get stuck. I've had a lot of different haircuts. Many of them were bad decisions. What I thought it was with your hair? hair. What do you know what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, that looks nice. I didn't shower today. My hair's bad. I don't shower today. It's really nice. It's just, I... That's your style. That looks so weird. No, you got it. Don't explain You did it, it Steve. Good job. No hair hair Good hair. job. Yeah. Speaking of bad decisions, did you know I ran a company for a little while? It was called... Digital Revise, and my friends Tyson Can you hear the fat in my voice? Zach Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Garrett uh. And I ran it Into the ground Digital Revise was an editing company where our in-house editors would be matched up with YouTubers that needed a video made hot and ready Unfortunately, it's easier said than done to run a business while running our own channels Oh, you guys paid attention to that, hello but that doesn't mean the entire experience wasn't worth it. We had a lot of fun working in the same office and it taught us all a lot more about what it means to be a friend. Or maybe they already knew. But maybe it was just me that didn't know. But it means to talk about anything. Yeah. Whatever we do in the future is gonna be 10 times better than anything we've done in the past. 10 times better, 10 times zero is still zero. Super Panic Frenzy. The gaming channel that just wasn't meant to be. But why did it end? It was doing pretty well towards the last few months of its existence. Super Panic Frenzy is gonna be the greatest gaming channel the world has ever seen. It's an unfortunate part of my past. And Reina's too, but mostly mine. Working on Super Panic Frenzy was the first uh, semi-real job I've ever had. Granted, it was still just doing YouTube, but it was a nine to five. And over the course of one year, I was able to meet so many cool people and have some of the most memorable experiences of my life. I even met my girlfriend working at SPF. So even though gaming wasn't the direction the company wanted to take, everything ended out for the best anyway. Well, as you can tell, the moving phase is over. I'm in my new apartment in LA. Hopefully I'll be able to tell you guys why I'm out here soon. Believe it or not, my worst haircut is yet to come. She wants to move to California. So yeah, I moved to LA to do Super Panic Frenzy full-time. This was for sure the biggest change in my life that I've ever had. I got a call from my old pal Jeremy. He said, do you want to come to LA and do a gaming channel with the likes of the SourceFed crew and Philip DeFranco? And if you've been on YouTube for a while, you probably know who those people are. So getting this call was a dream come true. But why'd I get picked? Why me? I'm not that good at anything I do. I'm not a comedian. I'm not really a writer. I say a lot of things that people are offended by and don't agree with. I'm gonna be straight up with you. I thought there was a dog with, that had like its back legs broken behind me. So why me? You're wondering. Uh, if it makes you feel any better, to this day I still don't know. 
Nevertheless, thank you, Jeremy, and thank you, Brett, because without these two, I would have never been in Los Angeles, probably ever. And well, that was it. That's the tour. Tour, that was just, that was the door. Yeah. There it is. Okay, bye. See ya. Okay. So where'd I live before LA? The simple answer is Seattle. The other simple answer is technically Bellevue. I just said Seattle to sound cooler. I was 21 years old and I can't even begin to describe to you how narrow-minded my worldview was back then. It's terrifying how much you can change over the course of a few years. And the older I get, the more terrified I truly am. Let's get right into the news. Today's story is about that horrible Minecraft YouTuber. That's right, the tall, the ugly, the pale, known as MLG Haunt, who makes horrible Minecraft videos. Everybody hates him. Subscribe. So why Washington? Oh, remember earlier when I tried to start a business with my friends? Well, here's a business we tried to start even before that. And guess what? It also failed. Actually, what it turned into is pretty successful now, so maybe Tyson, Zach, Garrett, and I are just a curse. Point is, we moved to Seattle with a bunch of friends to make a company, and I left about six or so months in to go to LA. It was tough leaving my best friends behind, but they knew how much this mattered to me and how big of an opportunity it was, so they were very supportive. Also, they all followed me to LA like a few months later anyway. Before Seattle, my friends and I lived in Swamico, Wisconsin. To put it bluntly, Wisconsin is just awful. Granted, I have a hard time deciding if I hated it more than Seattle, but they're both real bad. Me, Tyson, Zach, and at the time, Bert, but later he, uh, he became extremely poor and had to move back to Alabama. Bert, to this day, is still very poor. So we all moved in together to start a comedy sketch channel called BAM Lounge. The sketches were terrible, but they always have a special place in my heart because for the most part, they were made with the power of friendship. All we had were four out of shape dudes who didn't know cinematography or sound work or really how to use a camera. And we came together to build what was actually a decently successful channel. But I regret who I was back then. I was a pompous ass. I thought I was better than everybody and that stuck with me all throughout my time in Seattle as well. I don't know if it was a defense mechanism, I'm really not sure, but it's not who I am now. My parents tried to instill in me the importance of treating everybody with respect, and I try my very best to remember that every day. So let's talk about what happened before I moved to Wisconsin. My parents were reluctantly supportive of my decision to drop out of community college to pursue YouTube, and rightfully so. It was incredibly risky at the time, and it's even riskier today. Little motivation for you future YouTubers out there. But ultimately, my parents set me free, and leaving my parents' house uh, to move out was the first time I've ever seen my mom cry. The time before Wisconsin is pretty blurry to me. I was making Minecraft animations and, uh, and Let's Plays from my parents' house while going to school, and I had no idea what I wanted my life to be. I had met this weird dude online named Bert, and he introduced me to his friends Zach and Tyson, but our conversations about moving in together were just, they were pure speculation anyway. Now, my grades weren't bad, but I'd be spending time reading screenplays in class instead of actually working. To this day, I still aspire to be a writer-director for feature films. I knew school was not for me at the time, though. In fact, school has never been for me. I'm not a good listener. I'm impatient. I have trouble socializing. I've had these issues my entire life, and I'm still dealing with them. High school was lonely. I had a small group of friends who were about midway up the social ladder, but half the time they didn't even want to hang out with me. I was weird. I was self-conscious and defensive, but defensive in the sense that I'd make fun of others to avoid anyone making fun of me. Didn't work though. Now, I was never beaten up, which might have been good for me, but it is impossible to avoid all forms of bullying. It's tough to think about regrets in my early years, because I really appreciate where I'm at now. 
and to change anything in particular would change where I'm at. But there's one thing that, that does stick out to me, and it's that I should have been nicer. Not just to people at school, but my parents too. I would have been more open about how uncomfortable I was as a human being. Just in general. Maybe I would have gotten therapy. Maybe I wouldn't always feel weird in conversations for the rest of my life. My biggest regret was in junior high. I was suspended twice in two weeks. The second time was for holding a sign out the back of the bus that said honk for anal. The first time was for bullying a kid named Brian. Brian lived with his grandparents. I don't know where his parents went, but I told Brian one day that his parents didn't love him. And there's no excuse for that. The counselor also questioned me about a parody MySpace account created about Brian. That was also me. I remember feeling sorry for myself. So I came back to my hometown years later, and I was in the Taco Bell drive-thru, and Brian handed me what I ordered. And all I, all I said was, thank you. I didn't say anything else. I don't know where Brian is now, but I never apologized. And when I think about all this, I can't even begin to imagine how strong that kid was. Because I would have killed myself if I were in his shoes. That's the worst thing I've ever done in my entire life. It's also where I'm going to end the video, because everything before this doesn't matter. I went to elementary school, I had friends, I learned that being mean was one of the few ways I could successfully socialize with people. I have good parents, and they tried to help me, but there's only, there's only so much you can do. What it comes down to is learning these lessons yourself. So this was my life. Thank you.